It's the time for the package from China. Let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at another product from AliExpress. This is called the Digital Game System 3.0 inch of super wide LCD. In other words, it's just a cheap LCD, but it has a better viewing angle. But the reason I just needed to pick it up, I wanted to check out also what's this game console A12 model. And yeah, the way of this thing is configured, I really loved like the red and white, let's say, configuration of colors. But this thing like, 666 in one yeah you're not going to tell me like that they're not uh, that is accidental they're not doing this at purpose like absolutely this is something they are doing you know i just needed to pick it up what are we going to get in the inside you do have like different colors you can pick up i find this green with this you know, i think it is blue green version is absolutely horrible of course we have like the switch look alike with the blue and the red stuff something they're doing for like say two years now so built-in battery says that they have like around 20 hours of gameplay. So the idea behind this thing is like you can just pick this up, bring with you and just play your games on the go. But also plug it into a television and use it like a game system or that's the idea behind it. So I must say like when you're looking over when it comes to like the colors and also how it looks, it's quite interesting. It comes even with an analog stick. That is something that they don't use always with these like say cheaper devices. The D-pad itself, yeah, it's like a cheap D-pad, what you can expect from it, very long travel. At the right side, we're going to get ourselves the A, B, X, Y, then we have like select, reset, and the start button over here. There's no, no shoulder button whatsoever. I do find this thing quite comfortable. Let's remove also the screen protector from this. Normally, I'm always leaving these things on. The unfortunate thing is with these screens, they are like very glossy, and yeah, they're just cheap plastic, so they will scratch up very easily. The way the thing is like when we come with like the previous model where you can plug it in, you're only having low HDMI functionality, just a cheap, yeah, like just plug and this is like an old school jack plug. It's like, oh man, it's like horrible signal. They're even using the old school mini USB on off switch and the volume over here. And of course we're having like a tiny speaker, but it is quite loud. Do you know what's even kind of funny? They keep using this freaking song of the Final Fight song or the Final Fight game of the NES. So what we're going to get is basically like something new. We do have like Espanol nowadays. They added this to the list of language, but every single time you reset it, you need to choose your language. So it's really annoying. So when booting up, you do get like um, quite a lot of games. Indeed, you're not lying. You're going to get yourself 666 games. <laughs> All kinds of different games are on here, but I can tell you it's going to be a lot of like the same stuff. They're just repeating. I think they were doing this in the 80s and the 90s with the multi-game cards. Like, I see a lot of turtles, Efron race. That's kind of funny. It's like even when you press the D-pad, you can see the display over here moving. I don't know if the camera picks it up. That's how low quality this thing is. But let's try a couple of games and let's see how it is. Like, we have like, like Pong Pong. No idea what it is. Also, this thing will be filled with like weird looking homebrew games or custom games. Pressing the reset goes back to the main menu. I always wanted to choose English or sorry, Chinese. And there are like a lot of these games on here. But why are you going to choose, for example, this Spider Man game? So we do have like the AB button over here going on. Or AB, I mean like this way. And these are like the turbo buttons. So where it's configuration, normally would say like AB over here, XY over there, but. <sighs> but what all of these, let's say cheap devices have in common, that they're like having like the same kind of crappy displays. Of course, for the money, we cannot really complain. I'm gonna say that in the first generation of these like 8-bit system, we had like very bad displays. But even going to going to take a close look at an angle, it's very difficult to film with all of the reflection. You see, like it's not like ultra wide, bloody bloody blah on IPS display. It's just your cheap as a display. So you're also going to get with a lot of these previous models. What is kind of funny with these 8-bit systems that we do have like these very strange looking ones of the games. And I messed it up. 
<laughs> Already I messed it up. But when you're looking at the gameplay itself, it's kind of cool. I guess I reset the game if I mess it up like that. But the unfortunate thing is my button is like really sticky sometimes. Makes this thing freaking unplayable. I know, see this? Oh man, horrible. So that's a little bit unprof unpleasant that we have like these very smushy cheap buttons. It's unfortunate because this thing plays quite comfortable. Also with the display you can see it doesn't show up all the colors. You can see like the snails are not like very detailed where we have like sometimes different colors. Everything looks completely messed up. For once I don't see like a shitload of screen tearing. That was another problem I had in the beginning with these devices. But let's see how it actually plays when it comes to some beat em ups. Oh man, the controls are so messed up. Come on. What's kind of thing, funny if you look at it, like the controls are absolutely garbage with this thing. And the reason I'm saying this is because I was so confused. I was thinking this is the A and B, but when you're looking closely, this is A and B. The normal buttons and these are like the turbo function so so when it comes to the button configuration they completely messed it up and also again this button sometimes gets sticky it's also a very long traveled one it feels kind of smushy but let's take a close look at the tv mode unfortunately i didn't get an extra controller because it seems to be like they didn't send me or i just completely forgot to oh no wait i didn't order it like that yeah, so the idea behind it is like normally what you're going to get is the system itself. You plug it into television that we're going to do now. And with this configuration, you can just like have the cool option, you know, like to just to play this thing on a television with friends. So I did try it with previous products and they seem to be working. But the weird thing is like, even if like an older model laying around, something needs to be configured inside the machine itself. Otherwise, plugging in in the random controller doesn't work at all. I do have like a very long cable for once. All right, so let's plug this thing in. It still doesn't, it just keeps on playing. <laughs> There's not a lot of problem with these things like the cables and the connection are very cheaply made. Let's turn it off, let's plug it in television. I don't know what's going on, but it's, the display goes on and off simply because I don't know what signal to pick. Uh, let's choose a quick game. I do hear a little bit minor of an, let's say, an interference of the audio. But I think it's pretty damn cool to just play your games on your television this way. The addition of the analog stick is absolutely like horrible, like makes this thing unplayable. Like I kind of, oh. Or I just need to get used to it. In the end, it's not a great thing to have with this. So when it comes to the D-pad, they did do an amazing job. I think there's only one test for, like, say, the D-pad itself. And that is just for my favorite Kung Fu game. And the reason why is because I just wanted to check out if this thing is going to be any good for the D-pad. All right. So the movement seems to be just fine. So the D-pad just going to get herself like a pass. Again, the analog stick seems to be working just fine, but the main problem with the analog stick is it's positioned so weirdly. It's even like super uncomfortable to play. Oh yeah, let's try the turbo, the cheat turbo button. Oh crap. But when it comes to the gameplay itself, I must say it's not super bad at all. One of the changes they implemented with this handheld that we don't have a removable BLC5C or BL5C battery or Nokia battery. So we do have like this problem that we not have like a very easy thing opening it up. Is it a big problem? I think not. Also, you cannot really add games to this device. The games that are on it are not like 666. They're just like a couple of them and they are like repeating it. I want to thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. It would be great if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and yeah, I will see you in the next video.
Thank you.